So now for our last problem, section 6.5, number five, we want to graph the function y is equal to four secant of x. Show at least two cycles and then determine the domain and the range. So just like in our last problem, we want to show two periods of this um, with now our function is four secant of x. So we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to use our key points to go ahead and be able to graph this function. So using key points, step one, we want to determine the amplitude and the period. So just like in our last problem, we can find the amplitude because it's this number that's being multiplied by our function. So our amplitude is the absolute value of four. So our amplitude is four. Then our period is two pi divided by omega, where in this case, our omega is again, just equal to one. So we get two pi divided by one, which is just two pi. So the period of this function is two pi as well. So let's do step two. Step two here, we want to divide our period into four uh, equal subintervals. So we take our period, divide by four to get pi over two. So each one of our sub intervals has to have a length of pi over two. So let's go ahead and look at between zero and two pi. So this means that our intervals are going to end up being zero, pi over two, pi over two, two pi, pi to three pi over two, and three pi over two to two pi. So here are four equal subintervals uh, between the period zero to two pi. And just like before with step three, identifying our x values, our endpoints of our subintervals, they're going to be zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. So the exact same x values that we had before. And now we want to find those y values. Our function is y is equal to four secant of x. So our first x value is going to be zero. So we have four secant of zero. Uh, so if we have four secant of zero, secant of zero is going to end up equaling one. So this means we're going to have four times one, which is just four. So our point will be zero to four. Then we have four secant of pi over two. And if we notice, secant of pi over two is going to be undefined. So we can't use that value. So what we're actually going to do is identify which values here are, have to be undefined. So because cosine passes to the x value or has values of zero at pi over two and three pi over two, this means that we can't use pi over two or three pi over two as our x values. So this means that our next point has to be pi. So four secant of pi is going to end up being negative one. Four times negative one, this gives us negative four, which means that our next point is going to be pi negative four. Then our last value is going to be two pi. So if y is equal to four secant of two pi, secant of two pi is just equal to one. So we get four times one, which is equal to four. So we get our point 
2 pi 4. So all right, we have our key points. We also know that our function is going to be undefined on pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So we can draw in our vertical asymptotes. So according to our graph here, let's go ahead and mark this up a little bit. This is going to be pi over 2. This is going to be 3 pi over 2. So then this will be negative pi over 2 and negative 3 pi over 2. Then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. So we draw in our vertical asymptotes of pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So first things first, we're only considering our period from 0 to 2 pi first, and then we'll consider another one, another period. So our first value, we have 0 to 4. Sorry, our first point is 0, 4. And we know that the key attributes of graphs of cosecant and secant are going to be that they look like parabolas between given vertical asymptotes, uh, since our graph of sine or cosine um, has those curves, we see that they connect at the tops of those curves and they become parabolas. So since we're given a non-negative version of secant, we can say that at this first point, 0, 0 comma 4, this is going to be an upward facing parabola. But if this is going to be an upward facing parabola, we should draw in our next vertical asymptote. And our next vertical asymptote would then be at negative pi over 2. Since secant is just 1 over cosine, this is also an even function. So our values are going to be the same. So we have a vertical asymptote at negative pi over 2. And then we're going to have also another negative asymptote, sorry, a vertical asymptote at negative 3 pi over 2. So this first point, 0, 4, is just telling us where the base or the minimum of our upward facing parabola is going to be. Let's draw that a little bit better. There we go. So there's our first value. Then our next key point is going to be pi negative 4. So negative 4 is going to be then the maximum value on our downward facing parabola. Then our next value is 2 pi positive 4. Our plane kind of ends here, but we can go ahead and draw this side of our parabola. We can draw the next side of our parabola if we would like as well. All right. So this covered a little bit more than one period considered, considering that we went back to negative pi over 2. But now we can continue on using the formulation that we've already kind of created. So we know that our function secant is an even function. This means that if we plug in negative pi into 4 secant of x, this would also give us the value of negative 4. Then if we did the same thing with negative 2 pi, it would then give us a positive 4, so we can go ahead and draw these in too. So this would be negative 2 pi, positive 4. This would be negative pi, negative 4. This here we know is 0, positive 4. This is pi, negative 4. And then lastly, we have 2 pi, positive 4. So this here is definitely covering two periods so, or two cycles um, of our function. So step four, we've now completed. We have graphed our function. Then the last thing we wanted to do was determine the domain and the range. So we 
Our domain and our range and problems such as these are going to be very specific and they need to be written in our set builder notation. So our domain, we write as x where x has the property and we're going to say x can't be equal to the values that we see on our vertical asymptotes. So in our vertical asymptotes, these are three pi over two, pi over two, negative pi over two, and negative three pi over two. So we see that these are gonna be integer multiples of pi over two, but more specifically, they're odd integer multiples of pi over two. We're seeing one, three, if we continue, we see five, seven, nine, 11, and so on. So X cannot be equal to k pi over 2, where k is an odd integer. So that would be our set builder notation stating our domain. We know that x can exist everywhere except for k pi over 2, where k is that odd integer. Now looking at our range, our range also needs to be put into set builder notation. So we have y, where y has the property of, I'm not gonna write equal sign. We see that our parabolas, our upward facing parabolas could be four or more and our downward facing parabolas are gonna be negative four or less. So when we write this, we're gonna write y less than or equal to negative four or y greater than or equal to positive four. So this means that our values of x and y can exist all of these places written out in our property for our set builder notation. And those would be our answers there for our domain and our range. So all right. That finishes up our last problem and that would be the end of our review. All right, so if there are any questions on this review or anything at all before our exam, please feel free to email me. I do have my office hours uh, on Thursday from 11 to noon. Um, so stop by those if you want any extra help uh, or head over to the math center if you would also like extra help there as well. So all right, that wraps up our section uh, or our chapter six review and I will see you again in chapter seven. Good luck on the exam.